Kezia Dugdale, isn't it the case that the referendum changed the way elections are framed in Scotland? And the key divide in Scottish politics is either whether you're for independence or the union. And the trouble was that Labour didn't see this coming. I mean, it's fundamentally correct what you've said. Uh, Scottish politics has completely changed since the referendum and the Labour Party now has to change with it. And, and that's what I've done as leader of the Scottish Labour Party is to try and renew a sense of who we are and what we stand for. And what I'm trying to do, Kirsty, which I think is really important and arguably quite brave, is to appeal to people who voted both yes and no. Because I think it's a very dark day, a very dark future for Scotland if how we forever vote in a general election or a Scottish Parliament election or even for your councillor is defined by what you did in one day in September in 2014. But you could say that you know the way that people voted for years and years and years in Scotland were dark days if they just voted Labour time and again. The problem is that Labour did not understand over the years. I mean, Labour talked about devolution killing, uh, nationalism stone dead. That was arrogant and it was lazy and it wasn't true. I mean, that was one voice, that was George Robertson that made that case. The rest of the Labour Party was making the case for devolution and devolving more power from London to Edinburgh. But I do understand that things have to change now. And what I believe now, unites... I mean, we're talking... Well, we're talking about my leadership. We're talking about the time that I've been in charge of the Scottish Labour Party where I'm responding to the worst general election result almost possible in the Scottish election last year, going from 41 MP down to 1 MP. But what we have now is a prospectus for change. We have a policy platform in Scotland which is about ending austerity. But isn't it about realism? One political commentator at the weekend talked about you saying she's so relentlessly upbeat it's almost troubling. She's like a puppy that didn't see the bus coming. The point is you're not going to win, are you? I'm in this because I believe in tackling poverty and inequality. It's what drives me out of my bed every single day. I can deliver on some of that from opposition, but I could transform this country from a position of power, and I'm never going to give up the hope of fighting for that. You're set to lose, by the latest polls, 20 seats. Your lowest standing that would be in the Scottish Parliament since devolution. Surely it's going to take a lot more than just the same old, same old to win a Scottish electorate, which at the moment has got its head. I don't accept those numbers. The, the polls, when they run through the calculators, produce different results in terms of seats. I intend to campaign with every last breath over this next week or so to make the case for why people should vote Labour. And you say the same old, same old. Well, actually, this election is very different because it's the Labour Party who's the only party that is able to say that we have an anti-austerity pledge. Our tax proposals raise enough revenue to stop the cuts. A year ago, Kirsty, Nicola Sturgeon was the one who was saying she was the anti-austerity champion who was going to tax the rich. This year, she supports austerity and refuses to tax it's, the rich. But the, 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 the problem with your tax plans is it's not about taxing the rich. What you're suggesting is a penny in income tax which hits taxpayers over 20,000 a year. Last time that was put forward by John Smith in 1993 when he was the Shadow Chancellor, it suggests that that is what lost the election. I believe we live in different times now. I believe that people in Scotland desperately want to stop the cuts and end austerity. We have a platform for that. When you look at those opinion polls, which you've just cited to me, Kirsty, three of them show overwhelming support for our tax proposals. And the BBC's own issues poll, the number one most popular policy was the 50p tax. The second most popular policy was our plans for the basic rate of income tax. It's Labour plans to stop the cuts that are proving the most popular issues in this election. Kezia Dugdale, thank you very much.